só Deus e Pai de todos, o qual é sobre todos e todos e, e em todos. Now, in English, in Ephesians 4, 1, 6, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's fault because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious soul for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, notices for the coming week. Now, sometimes we listen to the notices. And it's rather like being at the cinema. When the commercials are on the cinema screen, it just goes over our heads because we're waiting for the main film. Well, that shouldn't be the way it is, should it, with the notices for the week? Because it's what we are doing together to the glory of God as a church. Therefore, we should be praying for all that is going to happen and be supportive, be there when it's happening, if we can. So pray for the school, Everton Free School. They will be in the building on Thursday morning uh, or Thursday afternoon at 1300, isn't it? Yeah, Thursday afternoon, 1300 schools work. And Stephen will be here with them. Pray for the young people, pray for the school, pray for the school's work in our community. And pray for those young people that are coming into this building, they'll sense something that is different about this place and maybe ask questions and we can pray for them so at schools work thursday at 1300 at uh, 7 p.m 1900 hours bible study uh, or time for prayer it's time for prayer i should say prayer time a time for prayer together on zoom online if you haven't yet joined us on zoom you're very welcome to do so and ask Stephen or myself or Beto, and we'll help you to find your way onto Zoom for Thursday evening. The Bible study will be at eight o'clock with Ian Hyam. Next Sunday, the 22nd of September, 10 o'clock, Beto will be leading breakfast with the Bible with our young people, and 11 o'clock, praise and worship and that will include the renewal of Lynn and Carl's wedding vows. And that's going to be a very, very special time together as a church. Next slide. There they are. Let's give them a round of applause. So do be here next Sunday and tell everybody else to come along as well and make it a wonderful morning of thanksgiving to God. Also, we have some birthdays. We want to say a happy birthday to Davi, who was, well, his birthday was earlier in the week. And we have a birthday on Friday this week, Oliver. Is Oliver here? Yeah. Yes, there he is. Hi, there he is. So uh, we'll be saying a happy birthday to Oliver. And it's also uh, Fabrizio's birthday this week as well. Okay. So can we sing happy birthday in Portuguese? Okay, a Portuguese version of happy birthday. Who will lead us? Who's going to be brave and come and lead us? Or at least sing loud from where you are. Somebody set us up going with happy birthday? After three, who's going to do it? One, two, three. I'm <laughs> 
Excellent, excellent. Next slide is also a sad Sunday, but this is a church, but an exciting new adventure for the family starting very soon. So I'm going to invite Stephen and the family to come to the front and Stephen will pray for you on this new episode of your life. Did we miss a birthday out of the middle? <laughs> David, did you miss a birthday? No. You got that side on that side. <laughs> did you get Fabrizio in the middle? Yeah. You did? Okay. My fault for not listening. I apologize. I apologize. Don't do it very often. Right. It is a happy day, and it's a, it is a sad day, a little bit. It's a happy day because these people are going off on a new adventure. So they're leaving us. This will be the last time with us today. They're going away for a, a new adventure into a different city in the UK. But it's a sad day because... They're going away to a different city in the UK. <laughs> it's been good for us to have them all here. Three of them here. We only started with two. Now we have three. Maybe when they come back. The, no, sorry. <laughs> Who knows? Who, maybe. Who knows? Yes. Let's pray for them. Um, as they go off or to, to leave us for a while when I'm sure they'll be in and out. We thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, for Leandro, for Alice, Lord for Livia. Lord, they are part of our family and yet for themselves they are a, a small little family. We praise you, Lord, for the good things, for the memories that we have of them. We praise you for their input, for the work they have done here. We praise you, Lord Jesus, just for them being here. It has been good for us. And we pray, Lord, that our fellowship together has been good for them. We ask and we pray, Lord, as they leave us, Lord, as they travel south, Lord, that you go before them. We know, Lord Jesus, you have already prepared things. And we thank you for that. We praise you for timings. We praise you for places. We praise you for the provision. We thank you, Lord, that as they leave us, Lord, you are traveling with them. Lord, and you will be with them, Lord, in their new home, in their new work, in their new environment. We ask you to bless them. Keep them safe. Lord, let them know your presence with them. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who they are. Lord, they are special to us, and they are very special to you. We bring you praise and thanks for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If we go to the next slide. And then want one again. That's it. So today is Spellow Lane Boot Camp. And I'll explain what we mean by that as we go through the morning together. Next slide. Now then, who is this? Who is it? Anybody know? <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. Yes, children, have you heard of Mr. Potato Head? Yes. Good. Good. Uh, well, so I have made a Mr. Potato Head, and I think he looks handsome. So here he is. <laughs> okay. Have I got that correct? Is that right? Does Mr. Potato Head look the way he should look? No. No. I spent hours making my Mr. Potato Head. 
That is not right. Oh, yeah, it is not like that, yeah. Doesn't look like me. <laughs> so, if I've not got it right, I've got a challenge for you, okay? I've got a challenge for you. If you, in Sunday school, with Maureen and Janice and Laura, okay? After you've had your lesson, and before all the grown-ups come back in, I want you to make me two really handsome potato heads, all right? And if you do so, there is a prize at the end of it, okay? So I'll be in there straight after the meeting, and I'll be looking for the potato heads, and if it's good, which I'm sure it will be, there's a prize. Okay, so that's your challenge. And I'll explain to the adults what this is all about as we get a bit further into our service this morning. Now then, as well as making really nice, handsome potato heads, I want you to sing and do all the actions to one of my favorite songs, which goes back many, many, many years. Adults, if you know it, then you have to sing it out nice and loud, and you have to do the actions as well. The actions will be on the screen, all right? And I wanna hear the children. So Laura, Janice, Maureen, tell me afterwards where the children doing the actions and where they sing in as best as they can, all right? And it's all part of getting your prize at the end of the morning. So, next screen.
So as the children go out to their Sunday school classes, we're all going to stand and sing the next song together. Let's stand and sing. of your love is shining in the midst of the dark is shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill this land Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send for the world, Lord, and let them lie. Fellow laying boot camp. Should we just pray? Heavenly Father, help us to reflect now upon your word. And we pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that we will indeed hear you speaking to us through your living word to touch our hearts, to enrich our lives, and to draw us closer to you and to give us that message to take into the world. So, Heavenly Father, be with us now. We pray, Lord, for our needs within the fellowship. We're very conscious, Lord, of those who are unwell. And pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with them in their situation. We pray, Lord, for those who are not with us for one reason or another. Be very close to them, we ask. And be with each one of us. Enrich our lives and help us to live to the glory of your name. We pray for our nation. We pray for our nations and ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you would meet us 
in our times of need and help us to be that light for the gospel in a dark world. Let our light shine before men. Lord, help us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, the Spellow Lane Boot Camp. What's this all about? Well, we've already been introduced to Mr. Potato Head. And the reason behind Mr. Potato Head is that it reminds us of... No, it'll, it'll come. Oh, there's no translation. No translation. Can you put the translation back on? Thank you. Is that it? Are we working? Yes. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, the reason for choosing Mr. Potato Head is that it reminds us of the body. And Paul describes the church as a body with Jesus Christ as the head of the body. And therefore, we need to know which part of the body we are, and we need to function together. If we don't, we're not effective as a church. Now, so far, the Apostle Paul has des described the Christian life for us. So many blessings. When we go back into Ephesians chapter 1, Paul tells us, amazingly, that we are all chosen by God and we've been adopted into the family of God. So we are God's children. And as God's children, we therefore know his love and his mercy towards us. Paul reminded us that we have been redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're also reminded by Paul that we have been uh, called and sealed. The Holy Spirit, the, the triune God's at work, isn't he here? We have God the Father in all his mercy who has chosen us, has adopted us into his family. We've been redeemed by God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. He is the one who brought that conviction to our hearts. He is the one who made us to be a child of God. He brought us out of darkness and into the light. We are now a new beginning, a new creation in Jesus Christ. Paul has reminded us that we have been saved by the grace of God and grace alone. And so in the first two chapters of Ephesians, that is what we have been learning. We have been learning what it is to be a Christian. But Paul is now saying to us, we can rejoice in the goodness of God, but we can't keep that to ourselves. We need to share it with others. We need to, as it were, keep the knowledge of our theology and our doctrine, our understanding. We need to keep that in our minds, but it needs to move to our hearts. And it needs to transform us, and it needs to give us a message to take out into the world. And that is why this morning is called the boot camp, preparation time. Because Paul, in his wisdom, says to us at the beginning of chapter 4, okay, it's time to take all that you know and all that you have in your hearts about Jesus. It's time to take it to the world. But before you take it to the world, you need to be ready. And so in the church is our training ground where we need to put those things into practice. And it has to begin with my relationship with you and your relationship with me and with each other. Because if we don't get it right in the church, what message have we got to take out into the world around us? I've mentioned before, there is a church not far away from here that has a banner, not on the outside of the building, but above the doorway as you're about to leave the building. And it says, you are about to enter 
the mission failed. And the great theme of Ephesians chapter 4 is unity within the church. And if we don't have unity within the church, if we're not ready to take the gospel to the world around us, then we will have no message to take with us. Also, if you invite somebody to come and join us on a Sunday or whenever, and they're coming into a church of disunity, then what witness is that? So we have to work at it. It's going to be hard work. And that's what Paul is telling us. Be prepared. Be ready to go out into the world. He's described so many gifts from God, so many blessings. But it would be criminal if we did not then take that to the world. So we need to be ready. So our buzzword this morning is the word unity. And that's why we welcome you to the Spellow Lane Boot Camp. Getting ready for the world around us. Now then, you've all worked out who Mr. Potato Man was. Well done. Here's your next test. Who do we now see on the screen? Who's going to be brave enough to shout it out? Who is it? It's yes, Nelson Mandela. That's right. So he's our first example. This is what it says about Nelson Mandela. As a leader, the South African president, Nelson Mandela, demonstrated remarkable leadership qualities, including advocacy for peace, powerful presence that disarmed enemies just with his smile, a high level of forgiveness in his heart, positive thinking, the ability to see the big picture and to focus on goals and missions beyond himself. That isn't too bad a mission statement for you and I to take on board as we go out into the world. So the first thing we're going to think about this morning is we're going to think about determination. We have to have determination. Paul says right at the beginning of Ephesians chapter 4, this is what he has to say. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. As a prisoner of the Lord, says Paul, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Paul's in prison. He can't be in the presence of the church in Ephesus, he can only write a letter to them. But the church in Ephesus, the Christians in Ephesus, were at the very center of his heart. And he longed that they may be ready to face the world around them. And it's going to take hard work. Begin in the church. Begin living together the way that God has designed you to live, because that is the way to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ. So it's going to be hard work. So he says, I urge you to live a life that's worthy of the calling you have. Let's just think it up for a little while. Okay? It's hard work, says Paul. Work hard because unity is the ultimate goal of our boot camp this morning. We won't be ready to meet the world until we have unity within the church. And that is why Paul pleads from his heart to the church in Ephesus, please work at it. Have that aim, have that ambition, have that determination to live in unity with one another. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to achieve that goal? Well, Paul goes on to say, be completely humble, verse 2. Be gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, and make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit 
through the bond of peace, because there is one body, and that's where this potato man comes in. There is one body. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and we all have our part to play. So Paul says, as you train and prepare to go out into the world, amongst yourselves, learn humility. Learn what it means to be humble. Now, being humble doesn't mean that we are a doormat that people can just trample over and wipe their feet. It doesn't mean weakness, but it means that spirit of humility. Paul was a great example of humility. Paul was so well educated. You know, we had a little, little problem to resolve this morning at home before we came to Speller Lane. And Laura came up with a solution. And you know what she said to me? That's because I'm a grammar school girl. Well, maybe that's true. But Paul could say more than that. He was so well educated. And he had such a high position within the government of the day and was well respected, not only amongst the Jewish nation, amongst the Jewish people, but he was respected by those who were in Rome, the Romans and the government, highly respected. But he doesn't impose that status on his Christian life and his relationship with the church. Rather, he displays humility. And we have an even greater and more wonderful example of that in the Lord Jesus Christ. The triune God we mentioned earlier, and God the Son, Jesus Christ, who has his rightful place in heaven. Absolutely. And yet he chose to leave that behind and to humble himself by coming into our world as a servant. He came to serve. The King of Kings came to serve the likes of you and I. That is what humility really is all about. Being humble, being like Jesus Christ, who gave his life. As undeserving as I am, he gave his life for me. So within this fellow lane church, Lesson number one is we become servants of one another, not lording it over, not exercising any sort of boastful pride, pride over others, but to be a servant. And whatever your needs are, that's my concern. Whatever your needs might be, that's my prayer burden. <clears throat> And whatever needs I have, that's your responsibility. There's a map. Stephen has placed a map on the notice board. Always look at the notice board. There's always information there that can help. And there's a map of all the different nations represented here in Speller Lane. So we've all come from different cultures. We all speak different languages. We all understand life from a different perspective. But when we're together as the Church of Christ, none of that matters. So when you look at that map, which I hope you'll do before you go home today, and you look at all the different nations, make sure that that is the fuel that you need to pray for one another, to talk to one another, to share with one another, to carry the burdens of one another. And together, we can be a wholesome body to the glory of God. Humility within the church is lesson number one from Paul as we prepare to go out into the world and share the gospel with those around us. He also speaks about gentleness, 
understanding, not being judgmental, not looking down at one another, but treating each other as equal with a love that has each other's best interest at heart. Paul has already spoke about the old barriers that have been removed. The context for Ephesus was the fact that there were no longer Jews and Gentiles, because now as Christians and as a church, both are one, the body of Christ, that relationship that we share in common. The barriers have been removed. So it's being aware of what you believe and understanding, the great truths that just motivate our thinking, but we don't exercise a judgmental attitude upon each other. Paul says that's absolutely essential for a healthy body, your training ground to go out into the world around us. Be patient, be kind, be understanding. There's an old word, or two words in the authorized version, that translates into long suffering. Now I'm telling you, and you've probably discovered already, you need a lot of long suffering to put up with me, with all my faults, all my <clears throat> strange ideas. And we're all the same, aren't we? But we're not to lord that over each other, but we're to be patient with one another, we're to be kind to one another, understanding of each other and meeting each other's needs because the welfare of the church is crucial for both you and I to understand. So Paul says, lesson number one, you have to work hard and have determination because by doing that, you'll be peacemakers. That peacemaking will start in the church. That's in verse three of chapter four. My Bible pages keep going back to chapter two. But in chapter four and verse three, it says this. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. That's where we begin in the church. A healthy body growing to the glory of God. Our next test. Anybody, anybody at all who knows who this is? Okay, it's going back in history, in the Christian church, in mission. A very powerful story, and I'm being unfair, but does anybody recognize who it might be? He worked as a pilot for Mission Aviation Fellowship. Is that a clue to help you? His name is Nat Saint. American, and he and his wife, they moved with others to a mission field in Ecuador. And the mission that they had was to take the gospel to the Indians in the jungles of Ecuador and to preach the gospel. And by doing that and being obedient to God, he lost his life. The incredible story is that today, the very man who killed him is a Christian and a church leader in Ecuador. God has his plans even when we don't understand what they might be. That saint was raised as a Christian, uh, raised in a Christian family, devoted to living for Christ. Bible reading, prayer, and stories of missionaries were staples of his diet in the household. And because of this foundation that he was given by his parents, that saint developed a strong sense of purpose and conviction to serve the Lord. And so we need to have that respect, not just a respect for one another, but a respect for what God has asked us to do. It's very easy to think, well, that was hard this morning, but I'll put that to one side, I'll go home, and I'll get on with the rest of my life. Because it doesn't really matter, does it? But Paul says it does matter. It does matter. And that's in verses four to six. There's one body, we're back to the body illustration, 
and as one spirit, the Holy Spirit. Just as you were called to, to the one hope and one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And so we have to work at knowing what it is to be a Christian. Now, if part of the body is injured, it hurts. And maybe if you've broken a leg, you can't really do all the wonderful things you could do before you broke your leg. Because your leg, not only your leg hurts, but the whole body suffers. The pain, the confusion, the frustration, the healing process. And if there's one injury, if there's one part of the body within the church that isn't in the right place, like Mr. Potato Head, if there's one part of the body that is hurting, it affects the whole body. And so Paul says we have to work at it and remember of what we are. We are one body in Jesus Christ. I'll go back to him. Think of it this way. Spellow Lane is a miniature representation of the church. And again, Paul describes the church as a body. He describes the body with all the different parts. He describes the body with all the different functions and responsibilities that we have. And it's important that each part of the body is in the right place. Okay, because the leg is important, but it's completely different from the arm, has a different purpose. The eyes and ears are important, but they too are different from the arm. They have their purpose. So everything in the right place with Jesus Christ as the head of the body. And Spell Lane is a miniature representation of the universal church. One day when we see God in the glory of heaven, we shall see the church as God intends it to be. We'll be gathered around the throne of God, worshipping with the angels. But until then, here's a tiny representation of the body of Christ. And we need to be working together. That's what Paul is saying. Ephesus, you need to be working together to the glory of God. It's so, so important. Remember that you're one body, therefore we have respect for one another. And so he talks about one body, he talks about one spirit, the same Holy Spirit who breathed out the word of God into the hearts of men so long ago, brings that word to life. And the one thing we all have in common, isn't it, together here at Spell Lane is this. If we're a Christian, we've all come to the word of God and we now understand what it is God has done for us and what he wants from us. And it's the work of the Holy Spirit who does that. He brings to light. He brings us from darkness into light. And we have that golden thread of the work of the Holy Spirit continuing to bring about unity within the church. Paul speaks about having one hope. This is the certain hope based on the promises of God. Not a vague hope that something might happen, like somebody we know at work or in the office maybe hopes they'll be a millionaire by next week because they will win the national lottery. It's not a vague hope. It's a certain hope that God has given us. We have that common hope in Jesus Christ because there's only one gospel. And as a church, we have the same message to share with one another and to the world outside. There's one Lord, Jesus Christ himself. Jesus who gave his life for us. That agape love that Jesus displayed upon the cross of Calvary needs to be founded in the church. Here at Spellow Lane, a Calvary love, a self-sacrificing love, that there's nothing too big or too challenging that we can't take on for the sake of each other. 
and we're prepared to work hard at that with God's help. One faith. Yes, as I said, we're all different. There's only one of me. And I hear you say, that's good. We're all unique. We're all very special to God. And we ought to be special to one another from different nations, different cultures, different languages. They can be a barrier in the world, but there should not be a barrier within the church of Jesus Christ. As Stephen very ably told us a week or two back, the church is a family. The church is not a social club. I could go along to a local social club and enjoy the entertainment and be part of the evening. But I had no relationship with many of the people in that building. We're just enjoying the entertainment together. But the church is different. The church is different. The church is the body of Christ. And we need to work hard at breaking down barriers. It will take sacrifice. It will take determination. But it's not an option. It's not an optional extra that we can choose to do or choose not to do. It takes sacrifice as we love one another. And there's one baptism. And of course, the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who brought you from darkness to light. It was the Holy Spirit who brought conviction. It was the Holy Spirit who brought you to faith in Jesus Christ. And of course, in that way, we were baptized. We were baptized by the Holy Spirit because he came into our life and he changed us. We are what we are as a Christian, not because we've achieved something great, but all of the grace of God, it is what God has done for us. And when we go into the waters of baptism, when we go into the pool, that's just an outward demonstration of what God has already done in our hearts. Dying with Christ as we go into the water and rising again out of the water in a testimony to everybody that we are a new creation. We have a new life in Jesus Christ. And we share that together as a church. Back in Ephesians chapter 2, remember those familiar words, it is by grace you've been saved. And that is through faith. That wasn't something that came from yourself, but was the gift of God. And we have one father. We have been adopted into his family. He's given us so much. We have an adopted granddaughter, and she's a lovely girl. But she wasn't born into the family. She was adopted into the family. But by doing so, she's taken on the family name and all the privileges and the blessings of being part of that family. They're hers. By right, they are hers. She doesn't have to earn our love. She has our unconditional love. But there's one big difference. While she has that inheritance, she'll never be part of the natural family because she wasn't born into the family. She was brought into the family. But the transformation that God brings about is that we are born again. And the wonderful thing is, we are family, really our family, with God as our Father, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. All the privileges that belong to Jesus belong to you and to me. And we share that together. What a privilege. What a blessing. And Paul wants us to know that. But we must move on. And we have the final part of our message this morning. Final question, who might this be? He's been on the television screens in July and August. His name is Thomas Bark. He himself is an Olympic champion in previous years, but is now the president of the International Olympic Committee. And we have seen, haven't we? We have seen some marvellous achievements in the Olympic Games. 
And I think, for me, the most inspiring competition was the Paralympics. Men and women who have difficulties in life, physical and mental, and find it hard to keep up and compete with the world around them. But there they were on the running track, out on the field, in the swimming pool, performing some outstanding results in their sport. Absolutely amazing. And that's a reminder that it is hard work in the church. Absolutely, it's going to be hard work. But just as those Olympians achieved greatness, so we too can achieve greatness by the grace of God. We are family. We are the people belonging to Jesus Christ. We are Spellow Lane Church. And we have the most amazing message that will, with God's help, transform not only Liverpool 4, but the whole of Merseyside and beyond the shores to other parts of the world because we have a message that brings salvation, that brings new life in Jesus Christ. But we need to work hard at doing that. It doesn't come naturally. But it comes naturally in the sense that God does it. But we have our part to play. And that's what Paul tells us there in verses 7 to 16. Paul uses a wonderful description here in chapter 4 and verse 7 onwards that talks about Roman generals receiving a prize, okay? And some language here that Paul uses, which might be a little bit different and difficult to understand, and we need to get our heads around it. But Paul was familiar with Roman behavior and traditions and ceremonies, because he worked in Rome. And when a general, a Roman general, was hugely successful in the battle, they would be given a tremendous ceremony and they would be seated on their throne and all the captives that have been you know, prisoners of war through those battles would be paraded before him and then the general would be, would be lavished with gifts in acknowledgement of his great power. Paul says, imagine this, King Jesus is sat upon the throne and those captives that are walking and parading before him, they are not prisoners of war, but those who have been saved by grace. Isn't that wonderful? Saved by grace. And rather than Jesus being given the gifts and awards, he gives that to his people. He gives that to the church. So we all have a part to play. Now, just as the arm is different from the eye and the eye is different from the ear and different from the leg, we're not all going to have the same gifts. Otherwise, it would be confusion. But Jesus Christ, as head of the church, has given teachers and pastors, deacons, for each one of you with the role that you have to play within the church. And the question we have to ask, what is our role? It may be that you're a prayer warrior, that you're always praying for the church and for each one in the church. Maybe you're very practical and you keep the building in one piece. Or you make the coffee or you greet people at the door. I don't know. There are so many roles, but we all have roles. If I go to the social club, I'm just participating in the sense that I'm receiving the entertainment. But the church is different. And God has given to each and every one of us something he wants us to do and we have to be working together that's the important thing working together for the glory of god all right and when we're doing that then we might be ready for jesus to say to us well done now you take that 
into the world around us. But it has to begin at home. So before God, each one of us, we seek, what is the gift that God has given to me? And how can I use that gift to God's glory, but also to help each other? Grow together healthy as the body of Christ. So we need to have a vision, a glorious vision that Jesus has given to us. And prayerfully, we need to seek his purpose for you and for me. And so we can close with the hymn, or stand to sing, Be Thou My Vision, and make it a prayer that will go from this meeting today to our homes, to our places of work or study, with a vision of what God intends for Spell Lane Church and the world around us. Be ready, says Paul, to serve your God. Shall we stand to sing? Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the peace and fellowship of God, the Holy Spirit, be with each one of us now and for always.